If not now, when? If not who, us, who? Have you ever heard anything like that? It's a compelling rallying cry for action, a way of saying, this is an important thing, and this important thing cannot wait any longer. I may not have wanted to be in the middle of it, but here I am, and so I'm diving in. The phrasing of the question gets attributed to all kinds of people, from Emma Watson to Ronald Reagan and John F. Kennedy to John Lewis, but really there's a story older than any of them that asks the same question, and the story is in the Old Testament book of Esther. Do you remember Esther? Um, a Jew that had been chosen by the king of Persia to be one of his many wives. And now one of the king's royal lapdogs is on a genocidal mission to wipe out all of the Jews. Well, Esther's uncle Mordecai takes to the streets in protest. And there is Esther living rather comfortably in the palace when this exchange happens. Hathak, uh, king's servant, went to Esther and told Esther what Mordecai had said. Then Esther spoke to Hathak and gave him a message from Mordecai and said, all the king's servants and the people of the king's provinces know that if any man or woman goes to the king's inside the inner court without being called, there's one law, all alike are to be put to death. Only if the king holds out his golden scepter to someone, may that person live. I myself have not been called in to the king for 30 days. When they told Mordecai what Esther said, Mordecai told them to reply to Esther like this. Do you think that in the king's palace you will escape any more than any other of the Jews? For if you keep silence at such a time as this, relief and deliverance will rise up for the Jews from another quarter. But you and your father's family will perish. Who knows? Perhaps you have come to royal dignity for such a time as this. Then Esther said in reply to Mordecai, go gather all the Jews to be found in Susa and hold a fast on my behalf and neither eat nor drink for 30 days, night or day. I and my maids will also fast as you do. After that, I will go to the king, though it is against the law. If I perish, I perish. Mordecai then went away and did everything that Esther ordered him. A few things about this story. Surprisingly, and maybe this is overlooked, Mordecai says to Esther, if you won't step up, God will raise up someone else who will. Or in other words, while we get to be partners with God, the fate of the universe is not in our hands. It's in God's. That should be both humbling and relieving. And then there's the question, of course. Who knows? Perhaps you've come to royal dignity for such a time as this. In whatever position you are in, you have a perspective and gifts and influence that no one else does. Will you be courageous and stepping up and speaking out against evil, injustice, and oppression? The third thing is this before Esther acts, she fasts and prays, and calls on others to do the same for her. This is not a solo job. It never is. It requires an entire community. I think we are in a lot of for such a time as this moments right now. In a way, I suppose we always are. The story, this story calls for us to be faithful in action. And it also helps us remember that the fate of the world is not up to us. It's up to God. God lets us be partners in God's rescue mission for the world, in God's work of justice in the world. The perfect time to jump into the fight is right now. Friends, will you be bold from wherever you are? Will you step into the fray? and partner with God. God bless you. Thanks be to God. Amen.